Beautiful night in Phoenix, Arizona between two sides, one in Tempe, Arizona, and one just basically down the road in Phoenix, Arizona between the ASU Sun Devils and the GCU Antelopes in men's club lacrosse. How are we doing, everybody, tuning in on the Varsity Sports Show? Alex Medina, I'm Kobe Bronstein. We got a great matchup today, Alex, the one and only matchup between the Sun Devils and GCU. Both of these schools very close in proximity. And also in terms of GCU, a two-game winning streak coming into today. And for ASU, two-game win streak themselves coming into today. That's right, Kobe. And both teams won their last game. GCU beat USC 7-5. to And ASU won their last game against UCLA 16-7. to So they're both coming off of a win. As you said, GCU has a winning streak. And so tonight it's going to be a very interesting matchup. And can GCU's winning streak end? We don't know, but we'll find out. And uh, will ASU continue theirs? So the Antelopes, a 4-6 and six overall record on the season, 2-3. and three in their conference and today is senior day for the GCU Antelope so all the seniors just got acknowledged and both teams also just went through their lineups from the PA announcer again the GCU Antelopes their head coach Jeffrey guys I mentioned their record four and six overall and let's take a look at the other side the Arizona State Sun Devils led by Justin Straker their record seven and five overall also a two game win streak that matches the Antelopes coming into today's game two and three and their conference record as well a massive 16 to seven win on April 7th their last time out and then six days later they are here today as we now await the national anthem but before that Davis Noble caught up with both head coaches and we're going to cut to the interviews right now. Davis Noble here with Varsity Sports Show, here with the ASU men's lacrosse coach, uh, Justin Straker. Coach, what are your set expectations tonight for this game? Yeah, I mean, obviously any game, anytime we play GCU, uh, it can get a little chippy, a little rivalry game, but obviously you kind of stay composed um, and kind of execute what we've talked about all week. Um, you know, we understand it's the last game of their season, senior night, uh, you know, kind of a must win for them to continue their season, so we know we're going to get their best shot, and, you know, I want to just... Uh, Make sure our guys kind of stay calm, composed, and want to execute each time they get on the field. Absolutely. And you guys are tied since COVID one-to-one -one on those games you've played so far. Uh, do you have any expectations on how you want to capitalize on possibly ending a win for tonight at the beginning of this match? I like basing COVID off a time frame. Um, you know, obviously, you know, it, it comes down to just, you know, staying disciplined. You know, it's something that we've... Uh, you know, gone in waves this year. You know, I think one thing that about this group has been good is they've developed as season's gone on. Um, you know, early on, I think we'd play up to team's levels, we play down to team level. And it's, you know, we just want to make sure that you're playing and meeting your standards on a daily basis. So, um, you know, that's kind of the goal. It's set by the captains this week, and, uh, you know, we'll see if they can get it done. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time, and best of luck with the game tonight. Thank you. Davis Noble here with Varsity Sports Show, here with Coach Jeff Guy from the GCU men's lacrosse team. Coach. GCU and ASU, you guys are currently one-to-one -one since COVID. What are your expectations for this matchup tonight? Well, it's going to be hard fought, high intensity, cross time rivalry. Uh, it's always a battle of the wills. It always comes down to the end, always comes down to the fourth quarter with these two teams. So a lot of history in the last t 10 years between these programs, and I don't expect anything different tonight. Absolutely. And you guys are, uh, do you have any set, expectations for how you want your boys to come out at the start of this game uh just be calm cool and collected and think and be focused uh, and always thinking about what your job is and how you need to execute and obviously be proactive in the communication be proactive in the thinking trying to thinking one two steps ahead always and uh be, that's going to trigger you to be in the right spot all the time i like the sound of that sounds like a great plan well thank you for your time coach and best of luck for your game tonight you. of course all right. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization.
We're back live here on the Varsity Sports Show. Kobe Bronstein and Alex Medina giving you guys the coverage of GCU Lacrosse. And they're taking on a rival that is just about a 15 to 20 minute drive away in terms of proximity in the Arizona State Sun Devils. The national anthem has been played. Both teams huddling for the final time before they take the field here at the home of the Antelopes. That's right, Kobe, and both teams are here super early today preparing for this matchup as they both have won their last game and they both have a winning streak. GCU down there uh, in the huddle doing uh, their chant and supporting each other as they're going out to the field for the first time in tonight's matchup. And we're going to see what happens tonight. Kobe, now, how are you feeling about this matchup? I'm feeling fantastic here in the broadcasting booth. Obviously, lacrosse, a very aggressive and sometimes violent sport, especially on the boys' side here. And I'm excited to call a great matchup again between two rivals in the only matchup between both sides this season. So again, a fresh recap right before the start of the game. ASU 7-5 and five overall record. They are 2-4 and four on the road. A better home record for the Sun Devils. That's 3-1. and one for ASU, again, led by head coach Justin Straker. And for the GCU Antelopes, four and two at home, and they have not won a single road game this season. ASU has one more game remaining after this one, another rival in the University of Arizona, this time next week, Saturday, April 20th. And then the end of the season is today for the GCU Antelopes. Yeah, and there's four seniors on the GCU Lopes team. Before we got started with the start of this game, um, they were down there joined by their families, and they got some recognition for their senior day here at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. And we are just moments away from the start of tonight's matchup. Yeah, the senior families for the Antelopes out in full force supporting their son, their brother, potentially a cousin, as we're underway here in GCU. ASU wins it off the draw, but here's GCU now with possession. They're looking up field. Now on the near side is Liam Reed, still with the ball, look, moving nor, tor, more towards the center. Now on the outside, back towards the center. And Cameron Seymour, who retreats back. Looking for some of his teammates as GCU makes some on-the-fly changes early here. 15-minute quarters. Now just under 14 and a half remaining here in the first quarter. Here's GCU again on the attack. Moving from right to left. Shot on goal is saved by the goalie. It's a good save by ASU. The guy in net today, Aiden Shea. Now up on the far side, ASU with control. Taking it over the center line. And they're still going as they move into the attacking zone. Now retreating just slightly again. Some on-the-fly changes on both sides. Number 20 for ASU coming out in Kai Reisinger. Now towards the middle again, and they're attacking half. The ASU Sun Devils with possession, slowing down the pace of the game early here as we approach under 13 minutes and 45 seconds to go here in the first quarter. They get it to the X-Man behind the net. Losing control of it and getting it back are the Sun Devils near side, switching it over towards the center. Now on the far side, looking for goal. Now back towards the center as they move the ball again, keeping possession of the ball. ASU doing a good job of connecting on a lot of passes here. Haven't gone for goal yet. Will they hear? They do, and they score. Wow. ASU on the board real quick. It's Braden Rome. He's been outstanding for the Sun Devils, and he puts them in front early at the 13-14 minute mark of the first quarter. Yeah, Kobe. Now, this game has been very, very uh, consistent, and both teams are playing very good defense. Now, ASU is controlling their passes, and they're able to connect with each other. Um, GCU's goalie was... Uh, or actually ASU's goalie was put to work down there as they uh, stopped GCU from scoring, and we're getting ready to um, get back to the game here. That play resumes now. one nothing ASU lead. They hold possession. How about a season to remember for Braden Brome? Make it 51 points for him. The guy in second place for the Sun Devils has 37. So for Braden Brome, goal number 24 on this season, which is now tied for first. On the Sun Devils. They maintain possession under 13 minutes ago here in the first quarter. Now on the far side, getting it back behind the net. 
Switching sides once again. GCU playing good defense to keep ASU in front of him, not allowing a shot off. Now towards the other side, rotating it once again towards the near side. They get it back up to the left point. Now towards the center, over to the right point now. Now making a run for goal, passing it back behind the net once again. GCU out of position a little bit. A good save, however, by the GCU goalie. And he's able to take away another opportunity for ASU to tack on a goal. ASU coach Guy, very vocal on their sideline as well as GCU carries it up and over the center line through a couple, a pair of Sun Devil defenders going coast to coast here. Now on the near side, GCU once again, it's Jake Hives. Rather Liam Reed, number one, for they go for goal, it's blocked. Now on the far side, heading towards out of bounds, and it does. GCU going to maintain possession, now make it a couple changes, and the Sun Devils will too. Just over the center line, GCU still maintaining possession, now trying to go for goal. Moving from left to right, getting it behind the net. Where is the ball? The Antelopes don't have it at the moment. And we're going to get a hold. It's going to go the other way into the possession of ASU. So GCU connected on some good passes, but eventually their only shot attempt blocked right before it got to the net to the goalie in Shaw for Arizona State. Now on the far side, the Sun Devils maintain control again. They work from right to left on goal. GCU from left to right on your screen. Now behind the net, working towards the far side is ASU making a couple of changes once again. And the shot clock approaching under 50 seconds to go here. Starts at 80 seconds, now under 50 seconds as we approach also under the 11-minute mark of the first quarter. ASU up 1-0 on a Braden Rome point-blank goal just on the left side in front of the GCU goalie. They switch sides from right to left. They get it back behind the net. Working from left to right. Get it back towards the center looking for goal. They shoot. And another good save by GCU. They're breaking real quickly. Up towards the center. Going coast to coast. GCU now looking for goal. They shoot and just goes wide. A good save by Shaw. GCU is going to hold possession once again behind the net. A couple of changes on both sides. Working behind the net. Now towards the far side. A couple of players take a spill on the right side of the net. Shaw, the goalie for ASU, already with two saves to two also for GCU. Now on the right side, continuing to go up that side. Now back behind the net. Working towards the far side now. One-on-one -on -one attempt now with a player in white and a player in black. Switching sides now back behind the net now. Ten minutes and five seconds to go in the first quarter. ASU up by one. Working towards the near side. Boxing out his defender. And it goes off the post. GCU still with possession. Their fans like what they see, working from left to right now on goal. Another good save by Shaw. That time a bouncer in front of him, and he's able to corral it with his stick. Alex, a furious pace of play so far on both sides, and some great saves despite a Braden Rome goal so far for ASU. That's right, Kobe. Both teams are playing very aggressive, and they are not afraid to attempt to score. And like I said before, ASU is passing very often, and uh, they're getting the ball around, and that's exactly what they need to do in order to walk away with a win tonight like they did in their last game. And GCU, their goalie is blocking ASU shots, and they are also attempting to score on ASU side. ASU maintaining possession as I say it. A, as I say that, rather, a turnover, and here comes GCU again with the ball in their defensive half. Some good saves already on both sides, and we're under nine minutes to go here in the first quarter of action at GCU. Good pass up the line now. GCU darting towards the goal, back towards the center. Can they get a shot off? They do, and it sails just high into the soccer net behind the lacrosse net. And it looks like we're going to get a penalty. So the clock stops at 8 minutes and 50 seconds to go. Looks like we're going to get a slash on Arizona State. So a power play opportunity, it looks like, for the Antelopes. We'll see who's going to be the recipient of this slashing penalty. Not sure it is at the moment. The referee is going to communicate with everyone at the scores table down low. 
eight minutes left in the first quarter and both teams seem to be communicating very well around the field with all of the different positions and they're getting the ball around passing very consistently and finding a way to make their way into a uh, scoring position. So GCU with a 10 on nine opportunity, the penalty by number 11, Matt Peters for the Sun Devils via a slash. They switch it towards the other side, cross court pass. Now on the far side, GCU misplays it. They get the ball back and they're gonna take their time again with some clock to kill on the power play for the Sun Devils. Low angled wrist shot sails wide. GCU gonna maintain possession again. They pick up a ball behind the net. Play continues. Eight minutes and 20 seconds and counting down. Now on the far side, GCU on the attack. A 10 on 9 power play after an Arizona State slashing penalty by Peters. Looking for goal on the near side. And it's a turnover. ASU now gets the ball and is going to be working towards the other way. On the steal, number 31, Connor Ross, the freshman for the Sun Devils. The power play is over, so ASU back to full strength. 10 on 10 lacrosse now. ASU carrying the puck over the center line on the far side. Patient as ever as we approach under 7 minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Once again, a 1-0 ASU lead. A beautiful point-blank goal on the left side for the Sun Devils. That ball deflects off the goalie. Another player trying to go back on it for the Sun Devils in black, but GCU is going to have possession now and go the other way. ASU not very happy with what they just saw. But again, here's GCU now going the other way. Number 25, Tyler Carter had it. Now they switch fields to number 12 and get it now on the far side. Shot clock under 65 seconds to go. Not a lot of jerseys in black are back necessarily. And the X attackman now getting it towards the center. A big hit in front of the goal as they get it now over to the near side with Liam Reed. Now the, the ball is behind the net. An ASU defender right in front of him. A couple of changes as we speak on the fly for both sides. They get it back towards the center. It's corralled high. And the goal for GCU. They're pumped up. It's their senior night, and they're able to level the score. A goal at the 6 minute and 42 second mark of the first quarter. Now look at the sideline, Kobe. Earlier, we did not see that from ASU when they scored right now 1-1 one one here in the first quarter with six minutes left to go. And as I said earlier, GCU is attempting to score every single chance they get, as any team would, and they just found the net in, on that play. And um, things are looking good here for both teams, ASU and GCU. Caleb Brazier, number seven for GCU, the recipient of the goal. He is fourth on the team in points, and he now has seven goals in the season. GCU winning control of the puck again. A good stab at it by the stick of Arizona State. It's going to go the other way. It's good defense off of the faceoff by Connor Ross. Here's Shaw, the goalie for the Sun Devils, getting it towards the center. They get it over the center line as the Sun Devils work through a couple of antelope defenders in white. Now on the far side, under 6 minutes and 12 seconds to go here in the first quarter. GCU just getting a goal of their own by Brazier. Again, slowing down the pace for the Sun Devils. They want to get some, some sort of set play opportunity off. Now on the near side for the Sun Devils, switching it over towards the far side. Looking behind the net, they get it there. Now back towards the near side. On the left point, looking for a goal. They get it in front. Is it in? It is. No. ASU now up 2-1 to one as the clock stops at 5 minutes and 45 seconds left. And a goal by Matt Peters. Now, the chemistry here tonight between both teams is very big right now. Um, both teams are very fired up. They're looking for a win. And GCU is looking to continue their win streak of, I think, 11 games. Is that correct? GCU, a two-game win streak coming into today. They haven't played quite 11 games. This is their 11th game today. Uh, they're four and six overall on the season. So ASU able to take a lead. We're approaching under five and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. ASU able to get possession immediately after the face-off. A pair of goals here, and they have had an offensive onslaught in their last couple of games, scoring 
a lot of goals their last time out, and then in a win over UCLA, they won 22 to four in Tempe at home. Now on the near side, ASU again maintaining possession. They've had control of it throughout most of the first quarter so far. Now towards the left, back over towards the center on the right side. Now officially on that far side, working back towards the net, working in what looks like a square or a mini rectangle here for ASU. They get it back on the far side. Now back behind the net towards the far side again, looking for someone to get open towards the middle. Number four for ASU, Max Mulk looking to box off, box out rather, some of the Antelope defenders behind him in order to try to get a point blank shot off. GCU doing a good job of converging on the ASU offensive players. Going to get a shot, they do, but it sails wide to the left. So ASU going to get possession of the, the ball again under four and a half to go in the first quarter. Ball back on the near side. Cameron McNeil with the ball, far side, back behind the net now for the Sun Devils. They maintain a 2-1 to one lead here as the pace of play has firmly been on the left side of the field early on today. Continuing to pass it around in that rectangle formation that they've been in. That's more of a square now, moving from left to right now, back towards the far side, working back towards the left. A shot on goal, misses wide to the left again. That one downstairs as opposed to one zoom in pass by air. So here's ASU once again doing a good job of keeping the ball and trying to get some good shots off on the goal. Working towards the near side. They get it back behind the net. Now on the far side, a shot attempt on goal, and they score again. ASU 3-1 to one here at Grand Canyon University. Now this is interesting, Kobe. The last time these two matched up, it was in, it was during the 2022-2023 season on April 15th. It was in Tempe and Arizona State was able to take down GCU 12 to 9 and right now the score 3 to 1. The Lopes still in touch and can come back. And right now, three minutes left in this first quarter. That goal by Frank Kirk, the senior midfielder for ASU, gives them a two-goal advantage as we're about right under three and a half to go here in the first quarter. There was a scrum for it after the faceoff, but GCU now with the ball, working coast to coast. ASU defender trying to push him off and a GCU misconnection on a pass. Good job defensively by Arizona State, highlighted by a bump to the body by Aiden Cox, the defenseman for ASU. ASU now with the puck on the far side, working it over the center line. Again, going from left to right on goal, already with three goals by three different players. Here now on the near side, working back towards the center, just in front of the center line. A couple different sports played here on this field. Rugby, soccer can be played, as well as lacrosse. Varsity Sports Show has covered some women and men's club rugby for GCU so far in their spring semester. Now working back towards the near side, Ryan Cups with the ball now, back towards the center, the far side, now back behind the net. Good deep move to get over to the near side. Another great move, a spin move by ASU. A wild pass up and over the net now. Who's gonna get the puck as it sails out of bounds and it's gonna go the other way for GCU. Yeah, Kobe, it seemed like GCU has done a very good job at maintaining Arizona State's offense and a lot of those a lot of the times the ball keeps going out of out of bounds. So ASU has really maintained possession well over the past couple of minutes. They have scored a couple of times, able to capitalize on those opportunities as opposed to a couple misconnections and turnovers for GCU. Now in the middle we get a whistle, however. Not exactly sure what the call is, but ASU is trying to get their offense to go quickly with GCU. Not in the right formation. They're not back. A great save by GCU, however. The Antelopes outnumbered, and their goalie coming up big. Now GCU with numbers. They pass it in front of the net, but a misconnection on a pass again. A turnover going the other way. A fierce pace of play right now. Going back from right to left now are the Sun Devils. Looks like they're going to take their time now with some on-the-fly changes. Looks like four different changes now, including Cameron McNeil coming back onto the field. There's going to be another slash. Not sure really what the call is on, but ASU's sideline has been very, very pumped up throughout this matchup. Communicating with the players on the field um, and 
we're waiting to hear what this slash is going to be on. So ASU now with the ball. We're approaching under a minute to go here in the first quarter. And the Sun Devils with a 10-9 power play now, up by two goals. Back on the near side, a point blank shot, a good save again off the stick into the soccer goal behind the lacrosse net. ASU going to maintain possession with the man advantage. Both teams again making a couple of changes. Yes, there's been a lot of changes throughout tonight's game here at GCU. Right now, 3-1, to one, ASU is leading the Lopes, and there is under one minute left in this first quarter before we head into the second quarter, um, as I mentioned earlier, GCU is still in touch to catch up to ASU. 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Both teams with a ton of substitutions, so their depth not lacking today with over 30 players on both teams. Back towards the center now again, working on the man advantage. The guy with the third goal of the game and Frank Kirk just with the ball. And ASU scoring again. A point-blank opportunity goes their way. GCU not too happy defensively. And ASU able to take advantage of their man advantage. And now with a three-goal lead, 4-1 to one here at exactly 30 seconds to go in the first. It's been a celebration down there on ASU sideline, Kobe, throughout tonight's entire game. 4-1 to one here at Grand Canyon. And, you know, while the score may be going in ASU's favor, Grand Canyon's team chemistry is still um, very good and they're uh, contributing to their team's motivation tonight. Four different players for ASU getting goals. Matt Decker able to get the fourth for Arizona State. They still maintain possession. A couple of changes now. We're at the 15 second mark here of the first quarter. Working from left to right towards the goal. Now back behind the net. Working with limited time here in the first quarter and a three-goal advantage. Cross-court pass now, rather cross-field pass, and they get another goal out of it. ASU pouring it on here in the first quarter, much to the, to the, to the delight, excuse me, of the limited Sun Devil fans in attendance today. And another goal by Matt Decker. That's right, and we're going to see what approach GCU takes in the second quarter and if they're going to be changing anything of what they're doing currently in order to catch up to the Sun Devils. And I've been talking about that team chemistry down there on the sideline of ASU, and it really is pouring onto the field and motivating their team down there. Triple zeros on the clock, and again, the guy on the fifth goal, actually the brother of Matt Decker, and Kyle Decker, number two for the Sun Devils. So both brothers with a pair of goals. Five total for the Sun Devils to just one for GC. We'll head to a quick break afterwards. The second quarter, don't go anywhere on the Varsity Sports Show. Hi, my name is Eric Perry, and I'm the proud owner of Eco Roofing Solutions. I've been in this industry for over 25 years, and I'm the current president of the Arizona Roofing Contractors Association. Our mission is to provide the absolute best customer experience, and we operate all over the entire state of Arizona. We will come out and provide a courtesy, no obligation roof inspection to you, as well as an estimate within 24 hours. Our team is dedicated to providing the best quality product and workmanship, and we're here to serve you. You can call us at 480-695-7736, or check us out online at ecoroofaz.com. To learn more about us, you can find me on Instagram at Your Bearded Roofer or at Eco Roofing Solutions AZ. We are proud supporters of our community's youth and the next generation, and we would love for you to come and join the hashtag Eco Family today. Call Eric and his team at Eco Roofing Solutions, 480-695-7736, and they'll give you a fast, free, no-nonsense estimate. Tell them Vince sent you. Hey folks, J.R. Lambright here, special field correspondent for the Varsity Sports Show. Join me every Saturday from 8 to 10 a.m. Pacific for J.R.'s Texas Tales, where I share stories of Texans who triumphed over adversity and gave back to their local communities. Tune in for a bit of gritty edification on KDUS AM 1060, Arizona.
Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix, Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome back on the Varsity Sports Show. Kobe Bronstein and Alex Medina here at GCU for a club men's lacrosse game between the Antelopes and the Sun Devils. Sun Devils coming off of a massive first quarter with five goals on the board, halfway to double digits, and a four-goal advantage against the Antelopes. So both teams switching sides. GCU now going from right to left. ASU from left to right on your screen. GCU taking their time, maintaining possession of the ball early on here. ASU has never relinquished the lead. GCU able to tie it up at 1-1 and then four straight unanswered goals for GCU. A point-blank shot, but a good save by the stick and into the net of Shaw for ASU. It was a good opportunity. There was no defenders in black covering their goalie. It was a point-blank shot. And again, the Sun Devil goaltender, rather goalie, coming up big. Down the far side, ASU with control of the ball, taking their time once again as they bring who they want onto the field to get into their set play. Now with the ball, Matthew Teeter for ASU, getting it back behind the net now, working it towards the far side, they do. Back towards just left to the center area, now back towards the far side, getting it back to their ex attack man behind the net. From right to left now, working closer towards goal, cross field pass. Now back towards the far side. ASU doing a good job connecting on passes. A shot opportunity, a save by GCU. ASU still with the puck, trying to work it quickly back towards goal. Almost another opportunity to look on goal. But again, remaining patient here with a four goal lead. Shaw, some big saves for ASU. Another one on that offensive possession before by the Antelopes. Working it back towards the middle now. Great pass, but the connection not made between both Sun Devil players in black. Now back with the ball again. ASU, Frank Kirk had the fourth goal of the night for ASU. He's looking for the ball towards the center. Doesn't get it. Nice cross field pass right between the wickets, and it's in the goal, or is it? No, the referee waves it off. No goal. GCU going to go the other way. It was a nifty move right in front of the net. Trying to go between the legs. Five hole. And the referee blew it off, and it's going the other way. So GCU now. Far side. What a steal. Behind the play there on the far side. ASU with someone wide open in front of the net, and they score. Make it 6-1, to one, Kobe, here with 12 minutes left in the second quarter. Now, we've been mentioning how well ASU has been passing the ball, and GCU is just not able to stop them right now. So we're going to see what approach they're going to be taking here in the second quarter as they are trying to take the steps to stopping ASU's passing game. It has been very well managed tonight. That's another goal by Britton Rome, his second of the day. Six to one lead for the Sun Devils. He's, he scored the first, got them started. And then now goal number six goes for Brandon Rome again. Two for him on the night, a collision in front of the net. And it's going to go the other way. Shaw with it behind his own net, taking his time. A couple of changes once again on both sides. It's been all ASU outside of one shot attempt going past Shaw for the Antelopes. Now back on the near side, the Sun Devils with the ball, looking for someone towards the middle in order to switch fields. Back into the possession of Frank Kirk, taking his time, getting it over to Matt Decker now. Both guys with a goal tonight. Back towards the center, working it over towards the near side. Another guy with a goal just had possession of the puck for ASU. Back towards the net, they're working it more quickly now. Back towards the center. 
on the far side. And officially a turnover as it goes out of bounds. Frank Kirk going to come off. A little errant on that pass high and to the right of his teammate working on that far side. But now on the far side, GCU, the Antelopes go on the other way, down five goals. Working towards the near side, trying to get in front of defenders. It's now back behind the net. Good poke check by ASU. A couple of kicks. Their ball still on the ground, but GCU eventually gets it. A player takes a spill, and it looks like we're going to have a possession going the other way after a player is pushed in the back. So the Sun Devils with possession. No shot attempts on Shaw, the goalie for ASU. Now the puck the other way on the far side for the team in black. Taking their time. A couple of changes off your screen. 6-1 to one lead for ASU. Five different goal scorers. One with two goals in Braden Rome. Leading point scorer on the season. Second on the team in goals. Working it towards the far side, trying to get it towards the middle where they can get, they can get a shot off. Now towards the right point, back behind the net. Now on the far side, working more quickly now, but a pass gets by the stick of Frank Kirk. Doesn't go out of bounds, right in front of the ASU bench area with all the players standing. Again, 30 plus players on both these teams, not lacking any depth today. Under 10 minutes remaining here in the second quarter. ASU, ASU up by five goals. Not a good pass there. It's still going to stay inbound. So GCU still playing defense on the back end. ASU attacking. Shot clock for the first time. A factor as it reaches five seconds. Who's going to get control of the puck? ASU, but the shot clock is going to run out. It's at zero. The, hair, the horn rather blares. And GCU is going to go back with it the other way. It's a good defensive stand by the Antelopes. GCU player working through three players in black. Two of them going to get a change, including Kyle Decker at goal scorer. Another whistle now. And it looks like it's going to be a timeout. Yes, it will for GCU. And that's really the only way, Alex, that this game can be stopped outside of a goal and a penalty briefly. But usually that there's not a lot of time to head to commercial breaks here. We're going to keep it with you here through about this 30-second timeout or so. Obviously, big time offense from ASU so far mounting in six goals to just one on the other side for GCU. That's right, Kobe. And ASU has had an amazing approach coming into tonight's game against Grand Canyon University right now, six to one with nine minutes left in the second quarter. And as we've mentioned earlier, the chemistry on the teams is huge in tonight's game. ASU, especially as they've been encouraging, they've been communicating and they've been passing the ball very well tonight and Grand Canyon the same when they score they're cheering and they're communi they're communicating with their players out there on the field and just kind of working around the obstacles that Arizona State is posing for them and uh, it's been a big passing game um, ASU is trying to take every single opportunity that they can get in order to score and that has been the majority of this game, 6-1 to one here at Grand Canyon University. Now, Kobe, how do you think Grand Canyon will slow down ASU? Well, I think ASU has been able to control the game and the pace the route to where ASU sometimes goes slow and they slow it down, go really by their own pace, and then a lot of times they're speeding it up when they're taking advantage of GCU, especially in their attacking zone and trying to box out some of their defenders, get someone right towards the middle in front of the GCU goal. Happened a couple of times. There hasn't been a lot of shots really outside the crease area of the goalie for GCU. They've really all been point blank, and ASU has been playing their game, and the ball has been on their half of the field for well more than three quarters of the game so far. Here's GCU with it now out of the timeout. Trying to switch fields, getting it back towards the middle are the Antelopes. A good spin move around an ASU defender. That shot goes just wide to the right. Yeah, and with that timeout being called here in this first half, that will allow GCU to have one more timeout. Um, each team gets two per, per half. A beautiful spin move, and it goes into the upper right corner of the goal. That was a sight to see for GCU. 
their fans on their feet, and it's now a four-goal lead for the visiting side, Sun Devils. Yes, still very reachable and still um, looking very good for Grand Canyon while ASU is up by four. And that may have been what Grand Canyon needed in order for the motivation levels to rise. And coming out of the timeout, what more can you expect on the side of the Antelopes and Jeff Guy? And out of the faceoff, too, GCU is going to maintain possession of it, trying to cut in half the ASU lead. Not a good pass there, so a turnover. It's going to go the other way and a break for the Sun Devils. And the clock is stopped at 8 minutes and 39 seconds as it went out of bounds. Now play resumes. I think it even went into the stands. ASU trying to get it up and over the center line. They do, working on the near side. Matt Decker with the ball. One goal so far today for the Sun Devils. Five different goal scorers, as I mentioned. One with two goals in their leading point scorer this season in Braden Rome. Really taking their time now. Like I said before, they're slowing down the game, and then they could speed it up in an instant. Especially with the passing game that they have been having tonight. Their main goal, trying to find somebody in the middle in order to get a point-blank opportunity right in front of the crease. Nothing showing so far on this possession. They get it more towards the crease. Great passing towards the other side. A shot and a goal! That was beautiful work on the outside and then the inside right in front of the crease. A goal by Matt Peters. 7-2 to two here. Sun Devils up at Grand Canyon University. And that is the result of passing, passing, passing that has been taking place tonight. And Arizona State cannot be slowed down. We're going to get started back at center, center field. 7-2 lead now for the Sun Devils. A five-goal advantage. GCU had an opportunity following the faceoff to cut the lead in half, potentially 6-3. to three, But a bad pass led to a turnover and then a goal on the other side of the field. GCU now with possession, getting it back towards the middle. Now working on that far side all the way back towards the net, just in front of the out-of-bounds, working from left to right behind the goal now. Looking for someone middle is... GCU. Von Swick now with the puck is the, rather not the puck, the ball. Thinking of hockey for a second, but this is lacrosse now working on the outside from right to left. GCU back towards the middle, trying to get it towards the opposite side. The ball bounces, now getting it back behind the net. Under seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. A spin move is a player took a knee on that and the guy with the ball now working towards the other side. It's Grant Warren looking for someone towards the middle, but he turns it over. Good stick work by ASU defensively and trying to go coast to coast down the line. He's able to. A lot of it's cheering going Fletcher on. Loman. Yeah, a lot of cheering going on. ASU liking what they see, especially from the bench. Now in their attacking half. One of the sticks actually broke on that last play. It was a player from ASU. Yeah, the top of the stick broke off, so I got some <laughs> oohs and ahs from the bench, as well as that stick work defensively by Lohman, Fletcher Lohman, that is, for ASU. Working from the near to far side, back towards the left point area, over towards the right. Back behind the net now, towards the left side once again. ASU passing towards the outside, getting it more towards that second level. Now towards the right in front of goal, and it sails well high. Actually hits a building well past the field area of play. And with all the balls out of bounds, ASU is going to maintain control of the ball. Towards the center now, working on the near side. Shifting it over towards the far side now is the team in black. Up by five goals, a bad pass too high. So GCU going to go the other way as the puck sailed, rather the ball sailed over James Gartland's stick. 7-2 to two lead for ASU. 
approaching under five minutes to go here in the second quarter. GCU looking for some sort of spark in order to close in on ASU's lead. They have the ball towards the center. GCU also going to make a couple of changes, so they're going to slow down the pace. And a couple of hand signals from head coach Jeffrey Guy in order to get his team going on offense. Ball is over the center line now. GCU playing at their pace now. Haven't seen the ball a lot of times in their attacking zone so far. Getting it over towards the right side of the goal now. Shaw hasn't been tested, the goalie for ASU, as of the last five to ten minutes or so. Now, now working back towards the net, and he's tested on that one, and he comes up big. Another save for Shaw and ASU. Yeah, GCU ha has been attempting to score a lot in this second quarter, and that's exactly what they need to do with a five-point lead here at Grand Canyon University against them. ASU with the ball on the far side. They're going to make a couple of changes. And it looks like, yes, we're going to have a timeout now on the side of ASU and head coach Justin Straker. Davis Noble's down there. At some point, he's going to try to get some interviews. And we'll get you to that live when we can, when we know that he either has a coach or a player at hand. But a 7-2 lead here. Four minutes and two seconds left here in the second quarter. An onslaught of offense. Nothing else to be said for ASU. They've had a couple of goals here in the second quarter. They had four goals, rather five goals, actually, in the first quarter. So it was a bigger first quarter as opposed to a second quarter. But they've actually made their lead even larger at five here in the second quarter. Yeah, Kobe. And I'm very surprised that ASU called a timeout um, with the, the point difference right now. Five points is how many they're up by. And... Both teams get two timeouts per half, and I believe GCU took one earlier, and now ASU, it's their turn. With four minutes left in this quarter before we go into halftime, and um, I'm, I, I would be interested to see what ASU is talking about because everything down there seems to be going well for them, and this gives GCU a chance to have a breather but also uh, get some advice from their coaches on what they should be changing, what approach they should be taking late into the second quarter. And it's going to be interesting to see how GCU comes back from halftime to try and make their way back into, into the game. And there's more time here in the second quarter. But on the side of the Antelopes, they really have everything to play for. If anything, they probably, a lot of their seniors especially, have more family members and fans representing them, watching them play in today's game than ever before because of Senior Day. And also, it's their last game of the season. It's not just their last home game. It's their last game of the season. This is a team that's 4-6 and six overall through 10 games. The other side, ASU, 7-5. and five. Their season does not end today. They have another game against their arch rival in the University of Arizona in a week's time on Saturday, April 20th. Yes, a big night here for the seniors. Um, their graduation is, is in about two weeks from now. And uh, there's four seniors on the Grand Canyon Lopes team. And can you believe that 2024 has flown by? Time goes by so fast, especially when you're having fun. And coming to games like this is the Varsity Sports Show loves to come and cover games like this. So ASC with the puck now working, rather the ball, working it towards the near side. And the shot rings off the post. Now it's all the way to the far side. Goes out of bounds, and ASC is going to maintain possession of the ball. Clock start stopped rather briefly. A five-goal lead, 7-2 to for ASU. Still on the forefront and on the attack here. ASU now... Playing in a square, continuing passes to get on the outside. Oh, my goodness. What an outrageous goal from ASU. Matt <laughs> Decker. Oh, my God. He shot that one without even looking through his legs. And it went in 8-2 to two here at Grand Canyon University. And the Sun Devils are on fire. Kobe, how about that play? That was some Sun Devil magic. 
from Decker and ASU, bumping their lead to six, eight to two here with three minutes and seven seconds to go. He had his back face towards the GCU goalie, putting the stick between his legs, Alex, as you mentioned, rifling it into the goal. GCU able to get the ball back after the faceoff. What a goal. I don't think anything can top that. <laughs> and we still have another half to play here at Grand Canyon University. But again, nonetheless, GCU with the ball, looking for some sort of spark and to creep back into this game goal by goal. That's right, Kobe. And there's smiles across the stadium after that play. What a sight to see on the ASU side. Now, if they can do that, what can't they do? Working from right to left around the goal, looking on goal, and he misses just wide to the right. Was Vaughn Swick for Grand Canyon. They're going to maintain possession. Clock stopped briefly at 2 minutes and 26 seconds, and now rolling once again. GCU working back behind the net, far side to near side. He's not going to necessarily turn around, working from left to right now. In their attacking zone, can GCU do something in order to creep back into the game? They're down by six. They have one goal here in the second quarter to ASU's three. A little half spin move, 180 from GCU. They get it back towards the middle. Okay, they try to get it on goal, but good job again defensively by ASU. It was a nice check in front of the goal. The ball is kicked all the way back to GCU. Goes under the stick of ASU. Back into their defenseman stick right now as they're going to work back upfield from left to right. The Sun Devils working it towards the far side. Still maintaining possessions. A couple players off your screen coming in and out of the game. ASU really slowing down the pace, taking their time. It's Matt Decker, the recipient of, again, an outrageous Sports Center top 10 worthy goal and the eighth of the night for the Sun Devils. It's really been all maroon gold and the main color in their jersey they're sporting today, black for the visiting side. Under a minute to go here in the second quarter. Working it back towards the outside, trying to look towards the middle, but. Also trying to choose some clock here, too, with a six-goal advantage. But they do have just 12 seconds left in the shot clock, so they got to do something. ASU still working on the outside, back towards the center now. Working it towards goal. The pass not connected with under three seconds to go, and the possession now of GCU. Shot clock's going to reset back to 80 seconds, but GCU not with a lot of time. Under a quarter of a minute left to go in the second quarter, they're down by six. Working from right to left in their attacking zone. They get it on goal, but it's way wide to the right. Currently 17 seconds left in this second quarter before we head into halftime. And wherever you are, whether you're at your house, here at the game, listening for commentary or in your car, uh, listening to it, be sure every Saturday to tune into the Varsity Sports Show from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. on KDUS AM 1060. This morning, Kobe and I had the honor of covering the Pat Tillman run here in Tempe, Arizona, and there was also a GCU Lopes softball game that was covered this morning between Grand Canyon and UCLA, and now here we are today at Grand Canyon for the GCU and ASU men's lacrosse matchup it has been a huge day here in arizona for sports both teams meeting right before halftime currently eight to two the sun devils are up and we're going to see what gcu can do when they come in to the second half of this matchup against asu so gcu with the ball out of the timeout head coach Jeff Guy wanted to talk things over and at least get one more goal to cut their deficit down to five goals. Obviously not ideal, but you'd rather have a three on the board for the Lopes as opposed to two. So they use their second timeout of the first half. Eight to two lead here. Kobe Bronstein and Alex Medina here on the Varsity Sports Show. An entertaining first half. Five goals for ASU in the first quarter. Just three here to show for it in the second quarter, but all they've done is build on their lead. 
That's right, Kobe. And heading into halftime, we're going to see if Davis Noble can get an interview with the Grand Canyon players or a Grand Canyon coach to see what approach they're looking to take here in the second half. Boy, this has been a long time out, but finally play resuming under 15 seconds to go. GCU taking their time. The shot clock not going to be a factor here What? At 60 seconds, the ball's deflected up in the air. Nobody has it. Is GCU going to get it? No, the Sun Devils are going to clear the other way. Can they get a shot on goal or possession? Even they won't. So they're going to maintain a, whoa, actually, a Sun Devil player just lifted the ball way up and over and hitting a building behind the soccer goal. But nonetheless, the team in maroon and gold sporting black today, up by six goals, eight to two. We're going to have a 10-minute halftime and we're going to go to a break on the Varsity Sports Show. Don't go anywhere. A six-goal lead for the Sun Devils. Davis Next. Noble is actually going to get an interview down there with the Grand Canyon coach. That's Coach Guy. Okay, and you heard it from Coach Guy. We are going to head to a break, and when we come back, it will be the second half of the matchup between ASU and GCU. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. I figured that in out. time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. When you think of family restaurants and sports bars, think Bonfire. Bonfire is part of the Tempe landscape, supporting local schools. Join the Bonfire Booster Club Challenge. Mention Corona del Sol, Desert Vista, Marcos Denisa, Mountain Point, or Valley Christian, and that school's sports program will earn loyalty points. The winner after football season will earn a fundraiser at Bonfire. Come for the food and fun. Support the community. Bonfire. Open every day east of I-10 on Warner. Show your game ticket all day Friday and Saturday and get 15% off. 480-306-6801. Hi, I'm Melissa Firestone. I'm currently a junior studying journalism at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, and I'm super thrilled to be a part of the Varsity Sports Show this Hey folks, J.R. Lambright here, special field correspondent for the Varsity Sports Show. Join me every Saturday from 8 to 10 a.m. Pacific for J.R.'s Texas Tales, where I share stories of Texans who triumphed over adversity and gave back to their local community. Can you hear me? Tune in for a bit of gritty edification on KDUS AM 1060, Arizona. Hi everyone, my name is Jason Goldie. I'm so excited to be returning to the Varsity Sports Show this semester. As you might know, I have ASD and I love facts, stats, and info. I learned so much last semester and can't wait to dig in and share my enthusiasm for all things sports with all of you. Go Varsity!
Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Hello, my name is Nash Dara. I am from Madison, Wisconsin, and I am studying sports journalism at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at Arizona State University. I am very excited to announce that for this upcoming semester for the spring of 2024, I will be interning at the Varsity Sports Show. I am very excited for the new outlook to come and excited to make some new friends. What's inside you? Unlocking the greatness inside you means digging deeper and going further than you can on your own. Banner Sports Medicine High Performance Center uses the latest technologies to train the athlete in all of us. Unlock the greatness inside of you. Hi, my name is Eric Perry and I'm the proud owner of Eco Roofing Solutions. I've been in this industry for over 25 years and I'm the current president of the Arizona Roofing Contractors Association. Our mission is to provide the absolute best customer experience, and we operate all over the entire state of Arizona. We will come out and provide a courtesy, no obligation roof inspection to you, as well as an estimate within 24 hours. Our team is dedicated to providing the best quality product and workmanship, and we're here to serve you. You can call us at 480-695-7736, or check us out online at ecoroofaz.com. To learn more about us, you can find me on Instagram at Your Bearded Roofer or at Eco Roofing Solutions AZ. We are proud supporters of our community's youth in the next generation, and we would love for you to come and join the hashtag Eco Family today. Call Eric and his team at Eco Roofing Solutions, 480-695-7736, and they'll give you a fast, free, no-nonsense estimate. Tell them Vince sent you. Hey everyone, I'm Seth Quartz, a senior studying journalism and media studies at the Hank Greenspun School of Journalism for the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I'm excited to be covering all sports in the Las Vegas Valley for the Varsity Media Foundation. What's inside you? Is it strength? Is it speed? Is it knowledge of the game? Unlocking the greatness inside you means digging deeper, running faster, and going further than you can on your own. Banner Sports Medicine High Performance Center trains the athlete in all of us with technology, techniques, and hands-on experience customized to you. See what you're capable of by unlocking the greatness inside of you. Hi everybody, my name is Alexandra Medina and I am a junior sports journalism student at Arizona State University. My passion for sports began when I started watching ESPN at just the age of six years old. I am so excited to be a part of the Varsity Sports Show and to work with you all during my spring semester. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. When you think of family restaurants and sports bars, think Bonfire. Bonfire is part of the Tempe landscape, supporting local schools. Join the Bonfire Booster Club Challenge. Mention Corona Del Sol, Desert Vista, Marcos Denisa, Mountain Point, or Valley Christian, and that school's sports program will earn loyalty points. The winner after football season will earn a fundraiser at Bonfire. Come for the food and fun. Support the community. Bonfire. Open every day east of I-10 on Warner. Show your game ticket all day Friday and Saturday and get 15% off for Perfect. Davis Noble here with Varsity Sports Show, here with the men's lacrosse coach. Coach, not the best results at the end of this first half. What are some of the mistakes that happened in the first half that you plan to capitalize and not let happen in the second? 
it's a, a lot of things that happen on the individual level. Um, so it's not really a scheme thing. It's not really a game plan thing that we need to adjust. It's been, you know, one guy making a mistake on the defensive end. Uh, we have to do a better job of just staying focused. We have to uh, make sure that we take away the pipes. We take away the inside, let them have the outside shots, slow play everything out to 15 yards. That's what we want to do. Let Jake Hives, our goalie, um, you know, make the saves, give him a chance to make the saves. And then on offense, it's a, it's a throwing and catching game. That's what it is. You got to be able to throw. You got to be able to catch. You got to be able to handle the ball. And then when you get your looks, you got to be able to finish. So the goalie on their end, he's a good goalie too. There's two good goalies out here. He's playing well. Uh, and uh, we got to stop shooting it at a stick. And we got to make it a little bit more challenging for him. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, thank you for the time and best yeah. of luck in the second half. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no worries. Okay, we are back here in the second half of the Grand Canyon University Arizona State men's lacrosse matchup here at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. And you just heard it from Grand Canyon coach, Coach Guy, on their approach coming into this second half and how the team will need to slow down things in order to reach Arizona State's five point lead right now, eight to two, heading into this third quarter. Now, Kobe, what are your thoughts on tonight's matchup? And we saw a crazy play there in the second quarter with ASU. The guy turned around and he shot it through his legs without looking and made it. Now, both of these teams have had a crazy amount of chemistry tonight. Yeah, Matt Decker, as you mentioned, an incredible goal. As I mentioned, probably a Sports Center top 10 worthy goal. And we were able to capture it on the Varsity Sports Show. So if that's sent in as some sort of clip for that, that should for sure be put on a highlight reel. But going back to the interview that Davis did, a good one with head coach Jeffrey Guy for GSU, he had a very long answer just after a simple question that Davis had of what were some of the mistakes that you made? And the first thing he really pointed out was not being able to finish and the turnovers. GCU certainly had a lot of turnovers, especially and they're attacking half of the field to where they're able to connect on some passes, but then their outside in game necessarily wasn't working out. But also defensively, ASU pretty sound, drawing some turnovers of their own, poking away the ball. And ASU's goalie has done a tremendous job in Shaw all night long. GCU off to a good start here, winning the faceoff, working now on the near side to the far side. They're going from left to right. ASU now from right to left. Eight to two lead. Five goals in the first quarter, three goals in the second quarter. One goal apiece for GCU in the first and the second. GCU now working back towards the far side. A defender right in front of the GCU offensive player and Ethan Eagers. Still with the ball now, working it towards the center. A pair of ASU defenders on him, working it back now as they look to get on the forefront. Working towards the right side of the goal, looking towards goal, but it's poked away again. ASU, they did that consistently in the first half. That was Matt Peters. He had a penalty in the first quarter. Giveaway there, a turnover. GCU going to go the other way. They have numbers. Going coast to coast, down the line, from one end to the other. Working towards the center. Can they get a shot off towards the right side? They do a great save by Shaw. Ball in front of the net. ASU player takes a spill on the left side. GCU trying to check a player of ASU. He sends him to the ground. It's a good check. A clean one, too. Working back towards behind the net, but it, not necessarily a giveaway. But GCU maintaining possession in and out of the netting of a player now working from near to far side as the pace is going to slow down a little bit. Entertaining 20 or 30 seconds here of lacrosse as they're working towards the far side, getting it back now behind the net. GCU a half spin as they go the other way now. GCU going from left to right, working towards the right side of Shaw, getting it back behind the net now are the Lopes. Possession was with Liam Reed. Now over with Grant Warren, still behind the net. The Lopes working on a defender under 30 seconds left in the shot clock. Ball goes down. A scrum for it. Now there's three or four players converging, most of them in black. ASU 
still with the ball. Now it's still on the ground, but AFC with the team in black able to get the ball once again as GCU clears defensively. The shot clock resets. 8-2 to two lead for ASU still under 12 minutes and 20 seconds to go here in the third quarter of action at GCU. Couple changes off your screen. Ball now was on the far side. Now they're working it towards the middle. The Sun Devils in their attacking half. Trying to get the ball more towards the crease area, especially in the middle of the GCU goalie. Working from right to left behind the goal. Now towards the left near side. Back towards the center. Ball now over to the right side of the goal. Back behind the crease on the left. Working it back towards the center. Now working it from player to player in order in that square formation that they did earlier on in the first half. Now carrying it from left to right. Finally, they switch it to go the other way. Cross field now. Now ASU again quickly get a goal. How about the passing in order to get their ninth goal of the night? The clock stops at 11 and a half minutes to go. ASU continuing to pour it on offensively. That's right, Kobe. And going into halftime, I thought maybe the halftime will slow down ASU, and it has not. 9-2 to two here at Grand Canyon University. And GCU, um, their coach, Coach Guy, he had mentioned how they will need to slow down things in order to catch up to Arizona State and get back onto their passing game as ASU has been on theirs all game long. And the ball is back into motion. Face off in the middle, but a little bit too early for GCU on the face off was Caden Cagle. So ASU with possession once again, trying to reach the double digit mark. And they've maintained the lead throughout. It was one nothing Sun Devils in the first quarter. GCU tied it up and it looked like the momentum would swing, but it's basically been all ASU since outside of another GCU goal in the second. ASU continuing to work the ball around in order, really playing the game all night at their pace. Ball's bow back towards the middle, working towards the near side, through the legs, and a goal again for ASU. It has been a celebration down there on the sidelines for the Sun Devils with their 10th goal of this game here in the third quarter with 10 minutes left to go in this third quarter. Now, I am not sure what Grand Canyon has in mind in order to catch up to the Sun Devils, but it will be very interesting to see. I think the main question is who can stop Braden Brome? He has a hat trick on the day. Three of the 10 goals for the Sun Devils who have now reached the double digit mark in a touchdown, or rather not a touchdown, but it would be a touchdown, an extra point in football. Kind of lead here on the road. The Lopes in white going the other way. Trying to somehow creep and crawl their way back in this game. Working on a defender. Getting in front of him and they score. That was a nice individual play by Liam Reed to get in front or rather behind the defense for ASU. And it's now a 10-3 lead. And that's a way to put your team on your back after allowing a barrage of goals. What a way to answer back. And I know that there is a big lead in tonight's game. However, the chemistry down there on the Grand Canyon's sideline has not slowed down. They are all encouraging each other, high-fiving each other, smiling, laughing, and just seeing what their teammates on the field can do with the communication that they are providing to them. So it's 10-3 ASU. The face-off not controlled by anybody. The ball's still on the ground. GCU player takes the spill. Whistle blows and a push in the back by ASU. So GCU with possession once again. Trying to go for two goals in their last two possessions. A nice individual effort on the last goal by Reed. He just had the ball, switching it now towards the other way. Back towards the center now. One-on-one -on -one opportunity potentially for Caden Hodgkisson to get past his defender, but he goes all the way back on the far side towards the center line, and now working it back the other way, all the way to the near side. GCU, the Lopes, the team in white, just scoring a goal, bumping up their total to three, but still remain down seven goals. Here's Reed, who just scored. A defender trying to shove him. 
He has the ball, working the ball back now. Okay, see a little bit out of line defensively as a player is pushed behind the net by ASU. Nice job defensively there by Ethan Eagers to keep in front of him. The freshman, GC, looking for a nifty goal over the shoulder with the stick. And it deflects out of bounds behind the net. So GCU still going to have the ball. No changes right now. So the clock's still running right out in front. What a save by Shaw. I don't even think it hit his stick, but his knee. That's got to hurt. But either way, GCU still has the ball, working it towards the other way. They're able to. Here's Reed now working on defender. Towards the center now, towards the left. Shot on goal. It's deflected wide once again to the left. Aiden Shaw has been put to work tonight with a lot of attempts of scoring from Grand Canyon. And like you said, to the knee, I can't even imagine how bad that would hurt. <laughs> Both teams not going through any changes at the moment, but all of a sudden we get a hold on ASU and it's going to go the other way, even before the ball was put back into play. Or rather, excuse me, a hold on GCU. So the ball now goes into the possession of ASU. Their coach wants them to work quickly as Justin Straker, but he's got to be happy with his team's performance up until this point outside of that individual effort on a nice goal from Liam Reed to get behind the defense. Uh, ASU with the ball on the far side. A couple of changes for the team in black with yellow trim. Well, now just in front of the center line, a pair of changes now on both sides off your screen. ASU slowing down the pace. If anything, if they don't get any more goals in the night, the least thing they'd want to do is chew some clock. And they're certainly doing that here. An 80-second shot clock approaching under 30 on the shot clock. We're now at that mark. Under eight minutes to go on the game clock in the third quarter. ASU working from left to right in their attacking zone. Now on the far side. Behind the net they go. Now towards the near side looking for someone towards the middle. Nobody in black now in the middle as they have one player now trying to get in front of all those white jerseys. Shot clock under 10 seconds. ASU got to do something. Shot sails wide to the right. Yeah, and it's very interesting to see how much time that both teams are given on the shot clock. And then we haven't mentioned the crowd that much tonight, and they are also counting down for the team to notify them. Shot clock runs out. We're going to have a fresh 80 so a turnover by ASU. GCU going to go the other way. Still a 10-3 to lead. ASU some good passing. And again, they're chewing some clock and they're holding the ball for an extended period of time. That's something you want out of a team with a major lead. Here we have Davis ready to give a report Me? on what's going on in the game. Davis Noble here with Varsity Sports Show for a quick field report. What's going on down here at the ASU versus GCU lacrosse game? Uh, well, seems to be ASU's able to do a lot of quick passing on their offensive line. And when they're able to make that happen, they're able to get a quick goal in. Unfortunately, that makes GCU down seven points. But we'll have to say, for the most part, GCU is able to stay on their offensive line as well. And I've also been able to get a couple goals within the second half. It's been quite a game so far, quite the intense second half, and we're hoping for any results of what can happen within the next few minutes. This is Davis Noble with Varsity Sports Show, and thank you for tuning in. Okay, so you heard it from Davis Noble, the third quarter update here with six minutes left in this quarter. And just like that, after Davis's report, ASU back on the board once again. And they move their lead back to eight goals. It's 11 to three for the Sun Devils. Kyle Decker with another goal. That's the brother of Matt Decker. So both brothers combined have four of the 11 goals on the board in this Valley clash between GCU and ASU. Face off now, who's going to win control of it? It's going to be ASU again, working from right to left. Trying to tack on to what's already an eight-goal lead. Working from left to right in their attacking zone. Making some changes on both sides, more on the side of the ASU Sun Devils. Ball now goes on the far side. Controlled by Decker, who just scored on the goal. Gets it behind the net to Gartland. Both of those guys have goals. 
Now over to McNeil towards the center as ASU looks to slow down the pace again. Teeter, another goal. On the other side, back below the net. Continuing to work it all around, not necessarily in that same square that they were before, but getting it back towards the right center of the field in their attacking zone. Under five and a half to play here in the second quarter. Continuing to work it around are the Sun Devils and chewing some clock as well. Under 30 seconds to go on the shot clock. Frank Kirk with the ball, now working it over a couple passes later on the far side. Towards the middle now, a couple of great passes. That one, pretty errant. And GCU going to have the ball. Or was it tipped, actually? I think it was tipped because ASU now still has the ball. Shot clock at 12 seconds and counting down now. They need to work fast. 11 to 3. The fans in attendance shouting as the shot clock now at 6. Ball up in the air. Who's going to get it? ASU. They got to work quickly. Nobody with possession of the ball now. And they run out of time. Yeah, and one thing I've been noticing... They're oh, and a flag a goes penalty. up in the air. Yes, there's going to be a very late penalty. Who is it going to be on? It looks like a delay of game, potentially. On GCU, if I had to presume. But either way, yes, it looks like a delay of game. So ASU going to be back on the power play. That's not what you want for GCU. And especially for ASU offensively, they weren't able to get a clean shot off. but to be able to chew off that much clock, and the clock stopped at 4 minutes and 54 seconds remaining, it gives GCU less of an opportunity to try to crawl back into the game. And actually, it was a delay of game on ASU. The guy in the box now is Cameron McNeil. My apologies on that. So GCU actually, the opposite scenario could be said to where now they have an opportunity and their best one of the night to try to crawl back into the game after... The second ASU penalty, and error pass gets back towards the other side of the field, and now they get it back into their attacking half. ASU sidelines wondering what's going on down there with their defense as GCU is passing the ball around very easily. Here's Capshaw for GCU towards the left side in the attacking zone, getting it over to Reed. Reed with one of the two goals in the night, individual effort off the glove, or rather the stick of Shaw, another save for him, tack on his total. Clock remains to run, no changes after the ball went out of bounds. GCU still with the ball, a fresh shot clock at 80. They're taking their time. The guy with the ball, Grant Warren, on the far side, slowly creeping his way towards the other side, now picking up some pace, trying to get it towards the middle with Reed, a connection not made. Who's going to get it on the other side of the field? It's going to be GCU. Yes, yeah, so if if Arizona State walks out of here with a win, that will begin the win streak for the Sun Devils. They won their last game in 2022-2023 season on April 15th at Arizona State, 12-9. to Right now, 11-3 to with three minutes left in this third quarter. And we're just waiting to see what GCU can do if they can come back. Um, it seems as if their environment down there on the sideline has been calm throughout the game and very encouraging to the teammates. So the clock has been stopped at 3 minutes and 50 seconds for quite some time now. Not exactly what they're trying to sort out. Not exactly sure that is what they're trying to sort out on the field. But either way, the game gets back underway under 3 minutes and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Both teams with goals, not exactly trading back and forth. It's been more of the Sun Devils here, even in the second half, after a brilliant first half. Looking towards the other side, cross field, and it's a turnover with GCU, the team in white and purple trying to go the other way. A dangerous pass, and it sails number six for GCU and Blake Olsen. It's not necessarily what you want, but it actually deflected off the stick of ASU, and they catch a break. So a fresh 80 on the shot clock. GS GCU going to work the other way across the field, getting it back towards the center now. Over the center line, back into their attacking zone. One change on the fly going to come on for GCU. Actually, a delayed one. And now entering the field of play, Cameron Seymour for the Lopes. There has been a lot of substitutions tonight with both teams, as both rosters are huge. There's about... Th 
30 players or more on both of these teams. GCU taking their time, trying to get the guys they want on the field to press offensively. The ball now on the far side, working on an ASU defender. The defender, number 10, Matt Decker, already two goals in the night, including a highlight reel one in the second quarter. Ball back up in the air, back into the possession of the team, and Black trying to work through a couple of defenders. He's able to. That was Aiden Cox. Back towards the middle now, working through two GCU defenders, back into their attacking zone. ASU off your screen, making a couple of changes. A great catch into the netting of Braden Rome, already with a hat trick on the day. He works himself back behind the net now of ASU, who's taking their time under two minutes left in the third quarter. Shot clock under 50 seconds. Can't see that on your screen. Ball now worked towards the far side. Now to the X attacker behind the net. The near side now. Up towards the center, continuing to pass in motion as they're switching fields. Towards the center. A lot of these guys on the field right now. Goal scorers for ASU. Here's another one in ASU, but that sh shot rather sails high and wide of the goal. Shot clock should be on, but it just went off, actually. So not sure what's going to happen with that one. Shot sail just a little bit to the left of the GCU goalie. And he's now getting the ball back upfield as ASU defensively retreats. GCU a coast-to-coast -coast opportunity, but electing to pass it off towards the far side. Yeah, and a lot of people are turned looking in that direction, wondering what is going on. Here's Reed with a shot that sails high and wide to the left. Under a minute to go, GCU shouting from their bench area as they get the ball back. Three different changes for the team in white and purple. One for ASU. Working from left to right behind the goal, electing to stay back on that far side, working it back up towards the left, towards the center now. Working from left to right. Good pass towards the center, rather not a great pass. Yeah, and, and it's going to go the other way to the possession of ASU. If Grand Canyon wants to get back into this game and catch up to Arizona State, they are going to need to maintain their passing game and shoot the ball maybe closer in towards the net. I'm not sure. Earlier we saw a lot of attempts down low from Grand Canyon. We haven't seen any of those lately, but we are going to see what Grand Canyon gives to us um, in this fourth quarter, 30 seconds left in this third quarter, and it looks like they got the shot clock working. We are going to head down to the field to hear an update from Davis Noble. Sports show as we come to a close of the third quarter with about 30 seconds left. I do have to say this has been quite the intense sec start of the second half. GCU is only able to put one goal in while ASU is able to put in two. I have to say, one of GCU's biggest lacks, I think, in this moment is communication, especially in the defense. Once ASU is able to get those passing across on their goal line, they are able to slip one in most of the time. But GCU, I believe, they're able to make way and start communicating better. They might be able to find themselves in a much better place in the fourth quarter. Hopefully, top scorers like uh, Kyle Kyle Kashaw and Grant Warren will be able to come out and possibly score more goals on the board. But as we wait till this fourth quarter starts, all we can hope is that this game just keeps being just as exciting as it always has been. This is Davis Noble once again with Varsity Sports Show. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, you heard it from Davis Noble. Looking to see what Grand Canyon can do coming into this fourth quarter. There's 30 seconds remaining in the third. And Grand Canyon is looking for an answer to get back into this game. Right now, 11-3 to here at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. And if Arizona State wins tonight, it will begin the win streak for Arizona State's men's lacrosse team against Grand Canyons. And we've seen throughout the night the passing skills that ASU obtains 
and Grand Canyon University's defense and trying to slow down Arizona State, but it just has not seemed to work out tonight. Approaching under 20 seconds to go here in the third quarter, ASU trying to maintain possession to chew out the rest of the clock here and potentially add on to an eight goal lead. Working now towards the center, almost trying to get a shot off. Now back towards the net, they get another goal. Just what the doctor ordered for ASU. GCU not happy on their sideline. It's a 12 to three lead as there are just eight seconds remaining in the third. Coach Guy is down there shaking his head while Arizona State is celebrating their 12th goal of the night against Grand Canyon University. And as we have mentioned earlier, tonight is senior night. It's the senior's last game here at Grand Canyon as a lope. And all is not going well for Grand Canyon in tonight's matchup. So just in the waning seconds here of the third quarter, following another ASU Sun Devil goal, the ball is going to go out of bounds. The clock stopping at one second. Just want to commend the efforts of Shaw tonight in goal for ASU. He's been magnificent. This could easily be a much closer game, but he has piled on the saves. Triple digits, or rather triple zeros on the clock. We're going to head to the fourth quarter, a 12-3 Arizona State lead. We're going to head to a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We have the fourth quarter and an exciting game between GCU and ASU. Hey, folks. J.R. Lambright here, special field correspondent for the Varsity Sports Show. Join me every Saturday from 8 to 10 a.m. Pacific for J.R.'s Texas Tales, where I share stories of Texans who triumphed over adversity and gave back to their local communities. Tune in for a bit of gritty edification on KDUS AM 1060, Arizona. Hi everyone, my name is Jason Goldie. I'm so excited to be returning to the Varsity Sports Show this semester. As you might know, I have ASD and I love facts, stats, and info. I learned so much last semester and can't wait to dig in and share my enthusiasm for all things sports with all of you. Go Varsity! Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Okay, we are back here at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona for the fourth quarter of tonight's matchup between the Arizona State Sun Devils and the Grand Canyon University Lopes. 15 minutes remaining in this fourth quarter, 12 to three. And we are gonna see what the Lopes can do to answer Arizona State back before the ending of this matchup. GCU controls the face off, but the ball's now back up in the air. A whistle blowing a push in the back. It's going to stay with GCU. So just one goal to show for it in every quarter so far. ASU alone in the first quarter put up five. Yes, and I believe Arizona State was looking for a penalty down there on that play, and they didn't get it. Now Coach Guy seems very frustrated with his team. 12 points against the Lopes tonight. Just looking to stop the Sun Devils. Heading towards the goal, a pass errant there, but it deflects off a stick of ASU. So GCU still with possession behind the net. The clock stopped on the game clock, the shot clock. Now it goes back underway. Here's Reed trying to push off of two different defenders looking towards the middle. No connection made. GCU able to get the ball back in their offensive zone, trying to attack towards the crease area of Shaw, who has been sound and terrific all night long. Working from left to right behind the net, now on the far side, back towards the left in front of Shaw. Spin move now, try to 
get to the other side. All the way on the right now, GCU going from right to left, ASU from left to right. Ball now behind the net, still working on that far side. Potential spin opportunity not used in full effect and a sidewander that sails wide to the left. GCU is still going to control it, but there's four seconds left on the shot clock. Got to work quickly. Play resumes, three seconds to go. And a wild pass that's going to go towards the buildings and out of bounds from Grand Canyon. Yeah, not much they could have done. Fresh 80 on the shot clock. 12 to 3 lead for ASU. Both teams coming into today with win streaks. GCU 4 and 6 overall. This is their last game, the last 13 minutes and 15 seconds remaining on their season for ASU 7 and 5 overall record. 2 and 4 on the road, looking to up that to 3 to 4. Trying to kill the rest of the clock and not allowing a miraculous comeback on the side of the Lopes. ASU really taking their time. A couple of changes on both sides. ASU was on the near side now, all the way over on the far side. Towards the top now and the near side. Back behind the net. GCU able to stay in front of these ASU attackers. Back towards the center. ASU now up in their pace a little bit. A little swifter now on these passes. They go from right to left. A shot attempt from well outside. It's blocked down. The ball still on the ground. GCU is going to get it, or will they? Yes, they do. They corral it now into the stick and the pocket of DJ Votesberger. Now on the far side of the Lopes, the team in white and purple. Only three goals to show for it, working from right to left. A shot on goal, saved by Shaw. Into his net. He has been magnificent. ASU with numbers working the other way. GCU a late change as well. Trying to go coast to coast. Is there going to be a pass? There will be. But GCU able to control it. A nice check right in front of the pass trying to be made from Matt Decker. Here's Reed near side. ASU with a couple of changes. Back towards the middle now. Nobody in front of this GCU player. And the shot's not on target. Drop into his knees as well. That was number eight in Votesberger. Again, not able to reach goal. Yeah, and we're going to see a few substitutions here in the fourth quarter. It has been a celebration down there on the Sudden Devils sideline. GCU still with the ball now towards the center in front of the line. Now working towards the goal with a shot, and it bounces in. Nothing Shaw can do about it there. That was a great individual play by GCU. And it's now a 12-4 game for ASU. Giving something the Lopes fans to cheer about. That's right, Kobe. And then just narrowing down the huge lead that Arizona State has had over the Lopes throughout tonight's entire matchup. And what is the seniors' last game? Hayden Atterbury with the goal. His first of the night. A goal in each of the four quarters so far, but there's plenty of time left on the clock for GCU to rewrite that and score some more here. Down by eight goals. A scrum for it. ASU looking for a penalty. They get one, so the clock's going to stop. A lot of pushing and shoving after the ball is dropped in the faceoff. Yes, and this has been a very, very aggressive game with both defenses, especially... Grand Canyons trying to slow down ASU and there has been a number of penalties tonight. We are just waiting for the signal of this penalty and we we should be getting it very quickly. It's going to be a cross-checking penalty and into the box for GCU number 55 Cannon Barcombe. So with an extra attacker now on for ASU following the penalty. Just GCU's second of the day so far. Two on the other side for ASU as well. The near side back behind the net to the far side. Working now towards the left of the center. Trying to get it back towards down in the crease area. They get it more towards that. Looking for somebody in the middle. They're able to connect more over there. Good save out in front by GCU. 
Ball's now behind the net. A GCU player takes a spill. ASU player takes a spill. All three take a spill. Two for GCU, and it's going to go the other way. GCU holding strong on their back line, but ASU able to draw potentially a turnover. Yes, and they get one. Beautiful job there. Still some time left to kill on the penalty for GCU. Shot on goal. It's a good save by GCU. Jake Hives, junior goalkeeper out of Littleton, Colorado, able to make the save. Drop down to his knees. Back to GCU, in and out of the pocket. Carrying it back over towards the middle center line into the attacking zone of GCU. Towards the far side, GCU making a couple of changes, and now they're at full strength as well. So 10 on 10, lacrosse again. Number 42 is coming out of the game. That's Grant Lacio back on. Number 21, Von Swick. Back over to GCU's number seven, Caleb Brazier, already with one of the four goals tonight for GCU. Back towards the center. The guy that's been very active for GCU tonight, and Cameron Seymour. Still has the ball looking for someone towards the middle. A little half spin toward his left. Back behind the net on the right side of the goalie, Shaw. Shaw with his stomach face towards GCU. Pass out in front, but there's no connection made. That could have been a point-blank opportunity. Not able to get a stick on it are the Lopes. ASU working really quickly. They have numbers. They get it towards the inside in front of the crease. A great save made out in front by Hives. Drops to a knee once again. He has had two magnificent back-to-back -back saves. GCU with numbers. They get it towards the outside. A shot on goal, and it's in. Liam Reed, his second goal of the day. What a sequence. And it's a 12-5 game in favor of the Sun Devils. Coach Guy cheering down there with eight minutes left to go in this fourth quarter as the Lopes are making a comeback here very late in the quarter. We are going to head to... Davis Noble down there on the sideline near the Lopes for a fourth quarter report. Sports show live on the field amidst the last quarter of this game. And I have to tell you, folks, it has gotten quite exciting. The Lopes are not giving up in this quarter. They have put two goals on the board while ASU has put zero. That being said, I do have to admit the communication must have picked up within that defense line, and they are now able to stop goals more than now than ever. Not only that, but they're also getting more opportunities against ASU's defense, hopefully shutting it down. As this game's starting to come to a conclusion, the boys are starting to get a little bit frisky with each other, starting to see a little bit more tackles, more hits, and the game's just getting more exciting as time starts coming to a close. Davis Noble with the Varsity Sports Show. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks, Davis Noble, for that fourth quarter report. GCU almost able to get another goal, this time into the net of the goalie Shaw. So GCU, a goal in each of the first three quarters, and two here with still seven minutes and 54 seconds left on the fourth quarter clock. ASU now converging on goal, goes off of the stick and officially out of bounds. Yeah, and with the score coming closer and the Lopes making a comeback, you know... It's going to be interesting to see ASU's approach now in this fourth quarter with seven minutes left. And I believe that they're going to try as hard as they can to chew the timeout. And they do get a lot of time on the shot clock, 80 seconds each time. And we're going to see what GCU can do against ASU and their time management. GCU out in front, but a whistle's made. And... Jeff Guy calling his third timeout of the game. Davis noted in his fourth quarter report that the communication has certainly picked up for ASU, rather GCU, with their largest goal output here in the fourth quarter, just with two. ASU doesn't have a goal to show for it. They've been outscored, believe it or not, two goals to nothing here in the fourth quarter, but it hasn't done any damage in terms of their seven goal lead with just seven minutes left remaining in this one. They've been on the forefront and in control of most of this game. It was one nothing for ASU. GCU followed that up with a goal 
after that, it was really all ASU, GCU, slowly starting to climb back, and then have had their best quarter so far through eight minutes of action almost. Yes, and I know Coach Guy was down there saying that a few players have made some mistakes, and that's natural in a sport. Now, as GCU is starting to climb their way back into tonight's game, Coach Guy has been visibly excited and happy down there, encouraging his team and firing up the team for the last remaining seven minutes of the fourth quarter. Now, can GCU stop ASU and end the winning streak between these two teams matching up? Now, this obviously will be the end of the Grand Canyon University's men's lacrosse season. And I am not sure when they are set to play next. I'm assuming sometime next season, but... And the time is running out. Seven minutes and 15 seconds left on GCU season. They have the ball out of the timeout. GCU already one time after a timeout scored instantaneously. That's blocked off of not even the stick, but it looked like the lower body of Shaw. He has been terrific once again. One of the biggest players coming up with some crucial saves today. Seven goal advantage for ASU. GCU, a 2 nothing advantage, however, here just in the corner is another goal for the Lopes. Down low, and that's what they did early on in the game. ASU was stopping them as that was the attempt they made each time. And now 12-6 to six here at Grand Canyon University. The Lopes are finding their way back into this game at a very late time in the fourth quarter. But they are narrowing down the large lead. Yeah, ASU has certainly shown... Some flaws here in the third quarter. The guy scoring Landon Gawthorpe for GCU, freshman out of Georgetown, Texas. 3 nothing in the goal category here in the fourth quarter, despite this six-goal lead for ASU, doubling up GCU. Antelope's really fired up as the ball rolled out of bounds, and they're still going to have possession of it. Trying to work on... Four straight goals to open up the fourth quarter and get to under a six-goal lead for ASU. A couple of changes on both sides, outside or rather off your screen. Now back behind the goal, taking his time, but doesn't have that much of it really on the game clock is GCU and Blake Olsen. Little half spin towards the front of the net, ball out in front, and it's a turnover. Back into the stick of ASU working quickly. Up the field, going coast to coast. On the near side was Justin Yu, number 35, getting it towards net, and it's bounced in. ASU answers back against GCU. Coach Guy down there shaking his head, and both teams right now are fired up. GCU fired up coming back into this game. ASU fired up for just scoring and answering back to the Lopes. 13 to 6 here with five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. That was quick. And in terms of GCU's communication, it has been much better here in the second half. But another turnover in front of the ASU goal. Five seconds later, it results to a goal for the other team. Not what you want for the Lopes. They're now down seven goals once again. Not even the largest margin for ASU tonight. At one point, they were up 12 to 3. Three goals on the board in this quarter alone for the Lopes to put their total to six. And one goal here that just occurred to put ASU's total to 13. ASU taking their time, 55 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Just about five to ten possessions remaining in this game for either side. GCU senior day, four seniors that they will be graduating in the next couple weeks here in 2024. Trying to make their mark as the clock ticks down to triple zeros for the final time, sporting the white and purple. ASU is constantly switching the ball all the way around. They go to the opposite side now, and they get another goal out of it. Just Able to get GCU out of line defensively, and it's going to be another goal, the fourth of the afternoon for Braden Rome. Just as the Lopes thought they were making their way back into the game, ASU shut them down with two 
goals with an answer back to GCU. 14 to six here, five minutes left in this fourth quarter of tonight's matchup between the Sun Devils and the Lopes. Clock's now under five minutes here in Phoenix, Arizona, between these rivals, both located in the Valley area. Nice catch to leap up and elevate by Kyle Kapishaw. Back on goal, sails just a little bit wide. Big hack at it from Shaw, and he's able to corral the ball. ASU really taking their time under 70 on the shot clock. An eight goal lead here. They've been outscored in the fourth quarter, but it hasn't mattered in terms of their margin of leading so far. Working the ball from the near side, now over towards the far side are the Sun Devils, the team in black with yellow trim. Back over towards the near side, the ball with Sebastian Skansen. And passing it more of in this square formation that they've been in for most of the game, especially when attacking and really trying to chew clock. GCU not being aggressive defensively to try to chase and get these turnovers despite an eight goal deficit right now. ASU continuing to pass it in a line under 20 seconds on the shot clock. Eventually they get it over cross field back towards the center, working it towards the other way. Looking towards goal. Now retreating back, getting it towards the center. Fires into the glove of the goalie, Jake Hives. Yes, and be sure to stay tuned here on the Varsity Sports Show to hear an interview from Davis Noble post-game with the coach of Grand Canyon University and the player of the game. Bad pass by GCU. Sails over the head. Of number five for GCU and Grant Warren, one of the leading goal scorers in this GCU team. Nothing to show for it today. Six goals on the board for GCU. They've certainly had a much better second half than a first half. Coach Guy not too happy with the communication and turnovers in that first half that led to their massive deficit. And it's now been blown open to an eight-goal lead despite their most success here in the fourth quarter. Ball's put on the ground, now into the netting of Caden Hodgkinson. Really taking their time, trying to chew off the rest of the clock here as we approach under two and a half to go in the fourth. Mullick. Now all the way on the far side for the Sun Devils. Again, working it all the way around from right to left. Now making an effort to go towards goal, but a bad pass. Off the stick of Sebastian Skansen behind the net. So GCU trying to do something. And again, they're leading in the goal scoring category in this quarter. They had one to show for it in the first, one in the second, one in the third, and then three here in the fourth. GCU, their 11th and final game today on senior day. Working from left to right in their attacking zone now for GCU. Continuing to have... The ball working the way really on both sides. Looking for net, and what an individual effort. Another goal. It's Grant Warren, his first of the day. Yeah, and during that time when Warren was looking for a pass to somebody, the crowd was yelling out, pass it, pass it. And he went for it, and he got the goal for the Lopes. So what a sight to see there with two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter between this matchup and it is currently 14 to seven. The Lopes have worked their way back into this game during the second half. And the ball is back in action. 14 to seven now. ASU still doubling up the Lopes here. A minute and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Scrum for it. The ball still on the ground. Oh my goodness, a couple players hacking for it. Almost like chopping an axe. Now the ball's going over from left to right on the far side. The team in white and purple with the ball looking towards goal. Trying to get it on the ground, but it sails wide to the left. 
GCU the closest to the ball, so they will maintain possession. GCU with a couple of timeouts left. ASU a couple in their pocket as well. Most likely not going to use one with a seven-goal advantage. An opportunity to look on goal. Getting it towards the center now. The guy that just scored, number five, and Grant Warren. Near side on goal. Top shelf. 14-8 to eight here at Grand Canyon University. Grand Canyon has been on fire in this fourth quarter. Yeah, the only thing stopping them, the game clock. Too little, too late. But a great goal. The second of the day for Caden Attenberry. The only one for the Lopes. The only player that is with two goals today. He went top shelf on that one. That got past Shaw, the goalie for ASU, who has been able to withstand a lot of GCU's major attempts. And also credit to ASU's defense as well, drawing a ton of turnovers. GCU able to get it again as a result of a trip in the back by number 23 for ASU in Christ Rodriguez. He comes out of the game, working it back towards the middle, looking for a connection back into... The stick of GCU, a good save by the stick and netting of the ASU goalie in Shaw. And he's going to slow down the pace. The shot clock reset back to 80 and under 30 to go here in the fourth quarter. ASU up 14-8, but this has been GCU's best quarter of the game. Down the line pass on the far side. But this is just going to do it here at GCU. The final score, 14-8 to with the final ticks coming off the clock. Triple zeros. And the Sun Devils on the road. And the lone matchup between these two rivals in the Valley. Take it 14-8. to What a game here at Grand Canyon University. Both teams making their way onto the field. And Grand Canyon joining the, the seniors for their last time on this field here in Phoenix, Arizona, giving them some hugs and gathering around them. And the Sun Devils making their way back towards the locker rooms. And Davis Noble waiting to get an interview with Coach Guy and the player of the game from, the, from Grand Canyon. Meow, 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 meow. Does this audio work? Yes, it does. So your final score, 14 to 8, I believe. Yes, that is correct. And the Lopes made their way back into the game very late, except they had a huge fourth quarter that will go in the stat books. GCU Antelopes fall to 4-7 and seven on this season, so their 11-game 2024 campaign has come to an end. They fall to 4-3 and three at home. Never won a road game this season, but certainly a lot of positives to take out of the fourth quarter today. They were able to double up ASU, more than double up, that is. ASU just in that quarter alone. In the first quarter, just one goal. Second quarter, one goal. Third quarter, one goal. And then five goals. In the fourth quarter for ASU, just two goals to show for it in the second quarter. But they were better throughout the first three quarters. And that's all that mattered as they clung on to a 14-8 to victory. ASU, an 8-5 and overall record. And today their season doesn't end. They have one more game at home against their arch Pac-12 rival in the University of Arizona next Saturday, April 20th. That's going to do it for another rendition of the Varsity Sports Show's presentation of GCU Club Sports. For Kobe Bronstein and Alex Medina, alongside Blake Leisure, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization.